When you look at what happened yesterday, what did yesterday's call between uh, you know Boris Johnson and Ursula von der Leyen actually change? Uh, I, good morning. I, I think it was an important moment in our process of negotiating the, the framework of our relationship with uh, the United Kingdom. It certainly injected, uh, at least we hope so, a new momentum into, into the negotiations. You know, we've been talking for, for the last four months. Uh, we were affected by, of course, the coronavirus crisis. And we now have uh, a few months ahead of us. Uh, I think there was one important clarification in the last few days, the fact that the UK does not want to extend uh, uh, the, the transition period. That means that we have a deadline on the 31st of December. So if we, if we start of counting down from that date and we allow for sufficient time for ratification, we know that we have about four months ahead of us to, to make it happen. So, um, Ambassador, does the EU take seriously the UK's threat to leave the bloc without a deal? Well, there's always that possibility. You know, you can have a deal, you cannot have a deal. I think we are ready for both scenarios, but of course we prefer a deal. I think everybody prefers a deal. Uh, and if I, I'm listened by uh, business people, I'm sure they do prefer a deal. It provides certainty, it provides a framework, and it allows us, both sides, the British side, the European Union side, to take full benefit from a very important relationship. Uh, this, we've been together for 47 years. We've decided to sl split at the initiative of the United Kingdom, which we fully respect. But we now need, need to limit the damage and maximize the potential. And the deal uh, provides uh, both of that. And uh, so we are very committed on the European Union side. Uh, we are uh, totally united behind our chief uh, negotiator, Michel Barnier. And we are engaged in these negotiations in a very sincere way. We've done some progress in the last four months. We hope to do more in the, in the four months to come. And we need to, if I may, uh, have a good mix of speed. Speed is important and momentum is important. But like in any, if you're driving a car, you also need to, uh, to drive safe. So the mix of speed and, uh, and, and, uh, and driving safely is, uh, is, I think, what we need for the next weeks and months. But I think we are all encouraged by uh, the results of the, of the call yesterday, uh, the atmosphere, but also the, the final statement. And uh, we will start very soon again uh, uh, in negotiating tables, trying to, to make as much progress as possible. But, <clears throat> Ambassador, when you look at you know, the, the deal, if the deal requires compromise on both sides, what areas do you see compromise being made on? Listen, we, we put forward some months ago a very comprehensive uh, package. Uh, in fact, if I, lo if I look backwards to our history of external relations, it's by far the most ambitious package of a deal between the EU and UK. It has an economic partnership, which is a very important one, but more than that, cooperation in many other areas, including the security of our citizens uh, that are a part of this, uh, of, uh, this wide and, and deep a relationship that we seek to have with the UK. But if you look only at the economic package, you will find a, an ambitious FTA with zero tariffs and zero quotas, associated with a number of fair play rules, because we believe it's important that we uh, ensure that there will be no uh, competition distortion or unfair competition across the board. And also an important package on fisheries, this being in, in itself an important economic file, but also one that has impact in, in, in the UK, in some of our countries, and certainly needs to respect some historical rights. So if this package of, of FTA plus fair play rules plus a fisheries agreement, uh, this is at the heart of our agreement. It's not the only element of it, far from it, but it's an important one. Uh, regarding, uh, you know, the difficult issues and that you've been mentioning, I think the, the fair play rules or the level play, playing field is an important one, but I would not uh, uh, undervalue uh, the importance of fisheries. We, we need a fisheries agreement as part of this economic partnership. There are other elements in terms of governance, in terms of the principles that will apply to our relationship. All this has been discussed. What we hope now is that uh, as a result of this very good uh, call uh, yesterday and the impulse that our the impulse that our leaders have provided that the negotiators can go deeper into some of these more difficult areas we need progress across the board 
Uh, it's not only yeah. the method that counts, and we are changing the method in the, the right direction. It's the substance of the but, talks that will deliver or not a good deal. But, but, Ambassador, you believe that there's a willingness, so at least there's a good intention on both sides to find a compromise. That's what I heard yesterday. That's what I read in the statement and other statements that were made after that. I like to say in this file, if there is a will, there will be a deal. But that requires commitment on both sides. And I think the, 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 the you know, sincerely, our attitude and our aim and our purpose now is to get down to business in the coming weeks and months and look very hard and work very hard towards an agreement. I think if, if you look, and you were talking about, in, uh, about this in your show, uh, uh, the present international context, economic and strategic-wise, yeah. it requires a, a, a good understanding between the UK and the EU. I think it's for our citizens, for our businesses, uh, it's, it's, uh, it should be our task to do at the utmost to get to this deal. I'm encouraged by the summit meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, let's they get mm -hmm. down to business now in the coming weeks and months. Um, regardless of whether we have a deal or whether we don't have a deal, how do you see, Ambassador, the relations between the UK and the EU evolving over the next five to ten years? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about it. Uh, it. You may say this is my role as an ambassador, but I actually am, <laughs> because I look at the interests uh, and the values that we share. Uh, on values, clearly, our countries have been together for uh, almost uh, half a century, and we certainly share uh, fundamental values, but we also share some strategic interests. Uh, there's, uh, the, the world is not a, an easy place to, to, to live in these days. There are a number of threats, and I think uh, uh, I at least look forward to a very solid, very wide, very deep uh, relationship between the EU and the UK. I think it's important for our countries, for our businesses, but also for the world for, for the world at large. So, uh, but there's a lot that we still need to discuss. We should not underestimate the complexity of these talks. Uh, you know, the broader you yeah. are, the more ambitious you are, the more <laughs> complex the issues become. So the agenda is an ambitious one. It requires a lot of work. And again, I think if we have a good mix of speed and, and, and driving safely, uh, I think we'll get there. Um, what does the EU think that the UK's role will be in matters of security and defence going forward? Well, we put forward a, a proposal uh, uh, for a negotiating table, as we call them, on security and defence uh, foreign policy issues at large. Uh, the UK has chosen not to open that table of discussion. We remain ready to do so whenever they want, because, uh, and you know, I spent my, the last four years as ambassador to the United Nations uh, and previously to the US, so my experience tells me that the relationship and the cooperation between the UK and the EU countries and the EU as such is absolutely critical, important, very relevant for uh, uh, world stability and, uh, and multilateral uh, solutions for our problems. So I hope that we can get there one way or the other. In our mind, we see, we see a, a solid framework for cooperation. The, the door remains open for the UK to join us in that discussion. But in any case, I think we are, uh, you know, positively condemned to a good cooperation on foreign policy and security for the sake of our, of our citizens.